I'm a big Spider-Man fan who loves the Spider-Man costume. It's, it's safe to say it's my favorite thing about the character. I've worked with Spider-Man's design for about six to seven years, and I think it's safe to say that I know the value of a design when I see one, at least to me personally. Um, so I think today I'm going to sort of open up about how to make a good Spider-Man design that can be received well specifically for the character of Spider-Man since this is something I have grounds to speak on and I feel that I could do a good job giving advice for this sort of thing since I have designed many Spider-Man costumes and manufactured many Spider-Man costumes. I hope this is a video that you guys can enjoy since I did uh, scour the community for fan designs which I will be going over at the end of the video Bef after after sorry I'm loosely basing this off of a script so that I can keep it fresh and keep my ADHD brain going and we will I we will be going over fan designs after I give general pointers so we're gonna get into that right now personally the worst thing for me, the biggest thing that like irks me about Spider-Man suits is when they are inconsistent. The worst thing a suit can be is inconsistent. Like we're gonna go over basic things like how to match logos, how to use color properly, and just generally, you know, give a personality to your costume. It's very simple things like are the lenses on your Spider-Man suit just a little bit pointy and angry looking? then maybe you should make the webbing look a little messier and more complicated and sort of lean into the more, you know, darker design choices. Something I like to focus on when I make the Spider-Man costume, I think one of the most important things is a lot of the time you're going to be grabbing this logo and putting it on branding if you're making it a Spider-Man costume is the Spider-Man symbol. You want to have a good Spider-Man symbol that summarizes what that character is or what, you know, is important about this costume with just the logo itself. There's a huge difference between the Spider-Man Stark Suit logo and the TASM 1 logo. The Stark Suit logo is more rounded and simplified, yet slightly cutting edge and maybe even just a little bit robotic, which is important to the movie because the suit that Spider-Man gets in that movie is heavily tech-based and a lot more light-hearted just in general for the tone of the movie, the movie is very fun and lighthearted and quick on its feet. While the TASM 1 suit logo is very dark, it's very angular, and it's very lean. It very much leans into the Spider-Man, or into the spider aspect of being Spider-Man. It looks scary. It looks like a spider. It's got, you know, more shaped pedipalps. Those are the little spider mandibles, like the teeth. It's got pointier legs, it's got like cuts in the logo and stuff. It looks fucking scary, and that's because the Spider-Man in that movie is a goddamn menace, and he's terrifying. And that suit is why, you know, that suit pronounces why he looks that way. Like, it adds to it. Like, imagine somebody in a different costume doing the same exact thing Andrew Garfield was doing. Or, f here's, a, here's a good idea, swap the Stark suit and the Andrew Garfield suit. You're going to be pretty confused. You're going to see good old Tom Holland walking around, you know, being lighthearted and whimsical in a suit that makes him look like he kills people, while you're going to be seeing a lighthearted, whimsical version of the character actually, like, borderline committing, like, hate crimes on people in the middle of the street. You always want to have consistency between the different logos you use on your costume. For example, you don't want to grab two different logos from two different costumes that have two different feelings and throw them together on a costume because it's just wrong. Like, I, I've been following this Spider-Man, the Amazing Spider-Man 3 fan film project for a while, and it seems promising, but one of the biggest things that sort of irks me about the costume they're using for the movie is that they're using a shorter version of the TASM 2 suit and then they're throwing, like, the stock image classic Spider-Man logo on the back of it when these two logos do not match at all. It's, it's kind of irking and a little bit annoying, but it's just a costume design thing. And this is just, like, uh, this whole video in total is just things you should do to make costume design nerds happy. So, you know, take it as you will. 
and good luck on the fan film if you see this. You want to make sure you design the front and the back logo to have a similar feel to one another. For example, if your Spider-Man is more lighthearted and whimsical, try simplifying your spider logo on the front and back. You want to have it be as simple as possible, therefore making it look as friendly as possible. And if your Spider-Man is menacing and maybe a little scary, like Andrew Garfield's Spider-Man and Spider-Man 1, you should maybe complicate the logo a bit, add more points, add, add mandibles, make it look terrifying. Not too terrifying, but you know what I mean. He still is supposed to be a superhero. Unless he's not. This is your suit and your story and your character or whatever. The colors of your suit should also reflect this. Uh, I feel as though if you're going to have a more dark Spider-Man, personally, like personality-based, he's pretty dark. He's an edgy. If he's an edgy guy who you know gets angry really easily, then you should use darker tones for your suit. If he's a more light-hearted guy, use you know lighter colors for your costume. Maybe more pure colors. Let's, for example, let's compare. Again, the homecoming suit and the suit in Tasm 1. I'm only comparing these suits too much because I feel as though these are probably the most polar opposite versions you could get of the character possible. One of them is very dark and gritty, and the other is very lighthearted and whimsical. Again, you can see a complete tonal shift between these two costumes. Just by looking at them, you can tell, you can sort of get a feel of who they are under the mask just by looking at the costume. I would also try to limit your color palette on your Spider-Man costume. You don't want too many colors to muddy up the design. I tend to only try to use more to t th less than I o fuck. I try to only use two to four colors on the Spider-Man suit, not including black, white, or any skin tones. But if black or white is going to be a huge color of the suit, I would recommend counting it of one of the two to four colors if it plays a huge part in the costume uh yeah but that's pretty much it this is just for making your fan design so now i'm gonna get into you know tearing apart the designs the lovely community have given me i'm just kidding i'm just kidding maybe so this is where we get to tearing apart the designs given to me by the community of course i am somewhat joking um Okay, so the first design we have here is obviously very derivative of the Spider-Man Far From Home costume. The only thing that's changed is simplifying the web pattern and giving the suit an entirely new logo. Now, um, I do like the Far From Home design. I think it's fine, and obviously we don't have a suit. We don't have a version of this costume that isn't battle damaged, so. If I were to fix this costume, I I would just simply say that it wouldn't hurt the artist to be more original and maybe break out of using another costume as a template. But I will critique what is here and that is original and that will that will pretty much be all I do for this costume. Um, this is what the logo looks like here. I'm gonna do like a rough sketch of what we see. Um, let me just make sure I get all of the important parts. Um, okay. Because this right here is essentially what we're working with as a logo. This is supposed to be a spider, which isn't very clear due to the more rounded design of some of these aspects. If I were to change it so that it was more recognizable as a spider, I would simply here just imagine this one is colored in so that it's easier to design or so it's easier to imagine i would maybe separate some of these parts and instead of you know instead of making it so that you know the logos are incredibly rounded you can still keep some of the roundness while also still implying that they are spider logos and you can alter like the angularness of the legs need if need be and like I'm imagining this because there's like a little connector right here. I'm imagining this is where the connector continues here. Uh, and then you can do that. And then uh, this can be your new logo. And of course you can adjust it to what you need be. I would just recommend staying away from making your logos too rounded. You always want to have some sort of point to your logo because you want to 
Because if you're going to have a Spider-Man leg, you know what I mean, you can either go really rounded like this, and it still works, because there's just enough roundness, and it's thin enough to get it across that it's like a leg. And if you want that point, you can go for that really, really harsh point. I lost track of how many legs I'm supposed to add. But that's, uh, that's pretty much all I have to say about this one. So here is one of the coolest designs I've gotten for this video, despite the despite the poor quality. You can pretty much trace out everything, you know, that you get with this design. Um, I think this is great. I think they did a very good design on this one. Er, although I will say that I think having the hair here detracts from the sort of look that the rest of the costume is going for. This is a very edgy suit. It looks almost alien and bug-like and like exoskeleton-like. So having hair just like right here is kind of odd. I feel like it works for other costumes. Like for example, Spider-Woman from the Ultimate Comics, the clone of Peter Parker, the female clone, works because the suit is more simple. But this suit is super complicated and really complex. Therefore, having like a weird sort of like hair thing going on at the top doesn't really fit if it was a different color like maybe white it, i could see it working but i think removing the hair and making the mask a full mask would be a good choice but other than that you have a good logo that complements the musculature of the character um i would recommend making it so like well whoops i'd recommend making it so that these little spike things continue all the way across the pink border here but other than that this is a pretty solid design that i quite like so here we go this i see this guy on twitter all the time this is one of my favorite renditions of the classic suit that i see on twitter um this is great right here this is some great a stuff again you've got the messy webbing combined with the yellow lenses like i recommended earlier you know mixing darker elements with yellow lenses um although it doesn't stay you know edgy all the way i do think it you know i don't know i feel a little conflicted i feel like i feel like using the uh i feel like using a more clean webbing pattern could work but i also i'm also uh i'm also a stickler for messy webbing um but i also feel like the lighting and the colors of the suit fit the messy webbing i don't know i'm torn on it uh but generally, this di design is very consistent. As you can see, the costume uses... It never varies when it needs to use a thin line. It will always use the same exact thinness of line that I like. I like that the web cartridges are built onto the costume. I think it's cool. The logos have great synchronicity because they are separated the legs and the abdomen. I also like that he repeats that for the back logo. That Those are... You know, that's like a 10 out of 10 for logo syncing. That's beautiful. Um, I like the web shooters. I always like web shooters on costumes. They're very simple, as you can tell. Peter pops in the cartridge from the bottom. Very cool. Very cool. I like, you know, I like, of course, I like the consistent use of accessory colors, which is gray. The accessories you will see on this costume are always gray. And I love that. This is peak color matching wonderful wonderful work from the artsy fartsy guy i should start grading these hold on this costume i'll give i, I don't want to be mean but this costume is kind of like you plagiarized a paper and then added your own paragraph no offense but I, I i see a lot of potential in this kid i'm gonna be generous i'm gonna maybe give him a c minus and this one from spider moo i'm gonna give it a minus this one from mr motherfucking artsy fartsy I want to give another A minus, but I'm also still conflicted, so it could be A minus or 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 A plus. I don't know. All right, so here we come to my boy, Madison Wall Crawler. Um, I've heard him talk a lot about this suit. Uh, essentially, in the place where he's from, those little patio chairs that you know you sit in at like the cookouts and shit. They're very they're like a very famous icon where he lives because they all have like this little cutout pattern in the back of him and here he uses it on his logo that's very cool that's very good lore i like that um but uh other than that 
Uh, this is your pretty standard classic suit flare. I do like the consistency in bordering on the gloves and boots. That is a very nice touch. I, again, I'm a big fan of consistency. I love consistency. Um, anyway, um, this is a pretty good suit. Again, I like the consistency. Uh, I think the shades of red and blue work with each other well enough. Of course, it could just be off-lighting because I've seen this suit in several different, uh, iterations but notice how all of the red whenever it goes into the blue it has to meet with some white in the middle and that's something i notice about the fingers i would maybe explore adding like a white cuff before you go into the blue section but other than that i thoroughly enjoy this costume maybe just you know look into making these um you know, adding that little white section before the blue fingers, and maybe thickening the legs, as, you know, this leg over here gets really thick, and these stay really thin, so maybe try making them, you know, a lot thicker. But other than that, this is a pretty solid suit, A-. minus. Alright, the Spider Manderson suit. I have virtually no complaints about this costume. It's simple, it's great, and it's classic Spider-Man. This is a simple redesign. It's still a redesign because it changes some things about the suit. Like again, I've had, you know, a lot of time to be up close and personal with this suit. Like for example, this Spider-Man suit, instead of having the arms go like this, where, you know, this is the blue section and it's and the gloves and the shoulder are met with, you know, a section where all the webs are put on. This suit says fuck you and makes it so that there's a little, you know, there's a little shoulder meme going on here where the webbing will stay here and not, you know, there's a space. There's a space in between the shoulder and the gloves with blue that I like, which because I've always looked at the Spider-Man costume. Let me get like a picture of the Spider-Man costume here. I, this is the closest thing I have. So, for example, you'll always on the Spider-Man suit, you'll always have the red shoulder linking to the glove but it's weird because it doesn't do that for the boot this is not bashing artsy fartsy's design but i've always felt it would be more natural for a spider-man suit to also connect the boots because the boots are kind of isolated they're they're they have no way to connect to the red up top like the gloves do and i think the way you can fix this is by doing what manderson does and slicing off the bridge between the shoulder and the glove or adding a bridge between the belt and the boots because i think when you have that red all connected like that it makes the design flow a little better but i have virtually no complaints about this suit a plus good job manderson okay so here we have a suit from spider nerd 05 um this is a guy i frequently go live with he's very cool um okay let's get into this costume um right off the bat <laughs> sorry something i notice is that there's these there's an inconsistency in what is bordered with the white just a slight inconsistency like for example some of these sections will be bordered by the spider but also no bordering on the white at all like for example i feel like there should be i i feel like i feel like i'm talking and not really thinking about what i'm saying that, so that it makes sense what i'm saying is that i feel like there should be maybe a white border here and i feel like these shoulder pads are just sort of abandoned by the rest of the design i feel like maybe you could connect them like this and have the red you know pull in through here maybe if you're really determined to keep the shoulder or the thigh pads but I would honestly recommend just taking them off entirely because I feel like they just sort of appear and I don't know if there's any way to work them in organically. Um, uh, but other than that, uh, this is your this is your pretty standard Spider-Man costume. I would honestly just recommend chopping off these thigh sections, but other than that, you know, it's your basic Spider-Man suit, and it's, you know, it's pretty good. Uh, I'll give it a B+. Okay, so this is a, uh, this was art drawn by my friend Spider-Pleb, and this was sent in, this is their OC, Starry-Eyed Spidey. I actually made this costume, and I made the Manderson suit over here, too. This is the, uh, it's obviously, this is a Spider-Man Undertale suit. 
which is a little weird. Don't get me wrong. This was the first actual suit I ever commissioned, which is was quite the tale to tell to my friends that, hey, I finally, or like to be like, hi, you guys remember how I opened commissions? I got commissioned to make a Spider-Man Undertale suit is the first costume I've ever made. And they were like, wow. And you know, but that's enough, you know, thrashing it for being a weird mix up. But I think this costume, you know, it meshes the two properties fairly well. It combines an Undertale logo that doesn't have enough flair to throw off the rest of the Spider-Man design. And, you know, I think the suit works with the combination of the two elements because one of them isn't really that strong. Like, for example, there'd, there'd be a difference between something like a bat logo on this suit. It would conflict with the web and the spider. So I think having the, the Undertale section be you know fully taken up by the torso and the legs and then giving the spiders section the gloves and shit to like you know do their own thing and never interact with one another is a good way to mesh these two designs ironically without you know having them interrupt each other i feel like this is a fairly good meshing of two properties and um i quite like it i'll give this a no I'll give it I'll give it an A minus. I simply don't have anything to change about it. Uh, I've never been a fan of mashup costumes, but this design works fairly well. Not bad. So here we are at the last design that I have on the on the list. Hopefully I can trim down this section so that you know this video isn't like 15 years long. Um, this is a fairly simple classic suit design from your boy, Yeet Yourself Off a Cliff. Um, so, uh, it's not very, it's not very clear when I look at, like, the personalities of these Spider-Man. It's not, it's not very clear to me who exactly they are. It would always help if I had a design or, like, an idea of who this character is or if, if it even is a character. So... I feel like having the darker shade of red is a little conflicting with, you know, other than that, the... Ah, I need to fucking... Oh, my brain! Sorry, I'm, I'm trying to configure what I'm trying to say. I think the, the simple looking webbing and the darker color of the red conflicts with each other a little bit. I feel like it doesn't work, but then again, you have, you know, again, a more sinister looking logo with a darker looking red making it you know, just a, lit a little bit edgier. I'm just a little conflicted. I don't think I like how dark the red is. I think also the segmenting on the hand here, where the hand turns black, could also benefit the boot. Like, for example, you could maybe add, like, a black section to the boot. This is supposed to be like a calf. I'm terrible at drawing. Don't read my comic book where I draw all of it. All right, so for example... Uh, we could maybe experiment with having a sectioned uh, design on the foot here too to mimic the glove because I think there needs to be a lot of syn uh, synchronicity between the designs of Spider-Man gloves and the designs of the Spider-Man boots. Um, so for example, you could have these shaded sections be black and keep the red parts here. So essentially, I would just recommend adding a section where there is black on the boot um i'd maybe brighten up the red a little bit if your spider-man is supposed to be your friendly neighborhood type of guy you can keep the logo uh if you want to go with the you know more friendly neighborhood spider-man route that's fine but if you were to kitty it up a little bit it couldn't hurt um but all i have to recommend is you know keeping the you know keeping this little boot mock-up that i suggest and you know maybe making this red just a little bit brighter you know it couldn't hurt to have it just be a little bit brighter and you know if you want you can go all the way and make it just stark red but um i'm a little conflicted on this suit uh because like the webs kind of get lost in the red on this specific art but it could be different elsewhere since it is it appears to be maybe just a little bit glossy although i can't tell i don't know I'll give this suit a B minus. Not bad. Not bad. It is me, Spider-Man. Probably Spider-Man. Shining my face on the wall to remove all strategical advantage. 
Hello. Hi guys. Uh, it's me, probably Spider-Man again. Uh, I'm gonna start wearing masks in my videos more often because I have serious self-hate issues and I hate going back when you guys send me videos and seeing my own face because I have so many people come in and say oh I was watching your old video and I'm like uh, sorry I didn't mean to come here to shame you guys but also you guys like my spider signal that I was showing off just now it's very cool um I might make a tutorial for how to make it one day, or I can give in to capitalism and sell it to you guys for cash. I'll, I'll, I'll put up a poll or something. I'll put a poll on screen, and, I'll, and maybe in the little iCard. You guys can vote on whether you can have me teach you to make it, or just sell it to you. Whatever works. I'll figure it out either way. But thank you all so much for watching this video. Um, I appreciate all you guys who sent in your designs again go follow the people who sent in their designs and again please don't bash anybody that sent in their design or like please don't be like a shithead about it just be nice and you know send out the positivity these people are brave for putting their designs up to me a big blowhard who likes to fucking yell and scream about spider-man but um thank you all so much for watching this video uh, I noticed that my recent podcast with ATX, who is in incredibly talented, did not get that much views, and I think that's because I'm giving you guys way too much podcast episodes to watch when you guys just want to see more content like this every now and then, like in between. I'll upload a podcast just as long as there's a video in between it. This was a video I did on a whim. I decided at 3 o'clock today that I wanted to do this video and finished it at 7. But then again, I don't want this video to be any more than 30 minutes. I'm sorry it's so long enough already. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. And of course, I'll see you guys later. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.